Welcome to Vanadium. This is Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. Most people don't realize that every scrap of metal they've ever seen is actually a crystal. All the natural metal on Earth is in crystal form. The atoms in every metallic element from sodium to tin to gold to platinum to yttrium and their combinations, the alloys, are all neatly arranged in very simple symmetrical stacks. As soon as materials are cooled from the liquid melt, the atoms race for their places and all line up in a small fraction of a second. Each finds its regularly arranged spot in the crystal as the metallic mass solidifies. The process could be compared to the game Musical Chairs. The reason why this happens is the ordered stack of metal atoms in a crystal is lower energy or more stable than the chaotic version. A hot liquid has enough energy to keep the pandemonium going, but once things get cool, the metal is forced to get organized. The disorderly state means the chemical bonds are being stressed out of their comfortable distances and angles. This state takes more energy to sustain than when everything is in its easy, proper place. An atom in a stressful configuration is driven to wiggle its way into the right spot, one with enough space, with the right, comfortable number of neighbors on the other sides of the yard. The forces of nature generally want order when it comes to materials. However, that hasn't stopped scientists from trying to see if they could create solid metal with the atoms still searching for their spots in the crystal, still locked in disorder. The metal would be a solid, but a liquid at the same time. So why do this? Why go through all this trouble? It's because some very interesting things happen to the solid metal when the atoms believe they're in a liquid. A non-crystalline or glassy metal looks exactly the same as its conventional counterpart. They're chemically identical, but they don't act the same. For one thing, liquid metals, metal glasses, tend to be much stronger than their organized crystalline forms. They don't have a regular periodic structure with any chemically vulnerable spots like crystal grain boundaries, so they're resistant to corrosion or chemical attack. They're much more elastic and less brittle. Metallic glass softens when heated instead of melting right away. They act like polymers or plastic. They have interesting magnetic and electrical properties distinct from chemically identical crystal forms of the same metal. There are two ways scientists have figured out to keep the metals disorganized and liquid even after they cool to a solid. One method is to chill the metal as rapidly as possible, deny the atoms enough time to get to the right spots. That way, they can't arrange themselves into a crystal. By thermally quenching or rapidly cooling the material, the atoms get stuck in their chaotic positions. They're frozen in the middle of their run from the liquid to the crystal state. This is accomplished by dropping hot liquid metal onto cold surfaces or sometimes into cryogenic baths. Any way to get as much heat out as quickly as possible. The goal is to solidify the material while the atoms still think they're in a liquid. The other way is to make things complicated for the metal atoms. Design an alloy with as many different metal elements as possible. Make it confusing for the atoms to know where the right spots are. It helps to use widely different sized atoms with different bonding characteristics as well. A medley, a mess, a Frankenstein monster of metal elements can frustrate crystal formation and keep the structure liquid or glassy even after it's cooled. One form of metal glass available has a blend of several different component elements not typically found together on Earth. An alloy of titanium, copper, palladium, and zirconium is about three times stronger than titanium, and its elastic modulus nearly matches human bone. It's also biocompatible. As a material, it's one of the best candidates for bone replacement. One other interesting thing, this alloy doesn't experience shrinkage when it solidifies because it essentially stays being a liquid. These two methods, rapid cooling and confusion through chemistry, can also be used together to allow a metal to retain its liquid atomic structure at room temperature. This seems like an awful lot of trouble, 
But this process is like alchemy. A metal glass really isn't a solid at all, but actually a super cooled liquid, just one that flows very, very slowly. These materials aren't just exotic curiosities. They can sometimes have more than twice the strength of a crystal metal. So metallic glasses are used in extremely demanding applications like armor and aerospace when the requirements go beyond what the usual stuff can deliver. These metal glasses are stronger because it's harder for cracks to grow a path through a material with such a complicated and chaotic arrangement of atoms. There are no interruptions between crystals and no easy break paths. The metallic glass partially maintains its deformability from the liquid state and can even be flexible and elastic like a polymer. The first metal glasses, composed of gold silicon alloy, were synthesized at Caltech in Pasadena, California in 1960. The material could only be made in tiny volumes, but the work attracted a great deal of interest in material science. In 1992, the first commercial amorphous alloy, Vitreloy I, composed of zirconium, titanium, copper, nickel, and beryllium, was also developed at Caltech as part of the Department of Energy and NASA's joint research effort to develop new aerospace materials. By 2000, researchers had come up with multi-component alloys based on lanthanum, magnesium, zirconium, palladium, iron, copper, and titanium with critical cooling rates comparable to oxide glasses. This meant that metallic glasses could be made in the same way as traditional silica-based window glass. By 2004, bulk amorphous steel was successfully produced by two groups, one at Oak Ridge National Lab, who refers to their product as glassy steel, and the other at University of Virginia, calling theirs Darva Glass 101. This iron-based material is actually non-magnetic at room temperature and significantly stronger than conventional steel. It's not just chemistry. A lump of iron is more than just a lump of iron. So much of the way it behaves comes down to subtleties of its structure, its previous processing, its past. Materials have a memory. Thank you very much. This was Chris Rankin with Vanadium.